How's it going everyone? JKXCX here, back on my desktop today because today I have the ultimate modding tutorial on how to do all of the weird stuff that I've been doing on the dev build which will include things like modding the horsepower on a stock car, modding the horsepower on an engine swapped car, widening the tyres, widening the rims, making them bigger, getting insane grip and stuff like that. The first thing says you're going to need an application called DB Browser for SQ Lite. There is a link in the description to it. Make sure you download that for your corresponding windows and whatever, etc. Get that installed and you're ready to go. Okay, and okay, once you have downloaded the application, you want to open it up and it should look something like this. Then what you want to do is click open database in the top left hand corner and then make your way to your Forza Horizon 3 directory. Once you have the Opposite folder selected, you want to go into it, go into media, go into DB, and then go to this little thing down here and select all files, and there will be one file on its own that you want to double click on, and you will get all of this stuff. Now on screen right now, I'm going to have a list of things I'm going to show you in today's video, and you can skip to the corresponding time so you can see how to do what you want to what you want to do, you know. So if you're only here for the tires, you can do that. But as you can see, the first thing we're going to do is how to increase the horsepower or the power of any car. So pretty much you can only upgrade the horsepower or the power of a car that can have an, an a turbo or a twin turbo upgraded onto it. At, upgraded onto its stock engine for example the Nissan GTR the Lambos anything like that can have a turbo put onto it there's a few things like the Reliant Supervan that can't have this done because you can only put a supercharger on it not one of the turbos but there is a way around that and we'll do that in a minute so let's say you have a car in mind let's say the Toyota Supra because that can have a turbo put onto it what you'd want to do is you would want to go to this list right here and you'd want to go down to data underscore engine and then you have all of the engine IDs and stuff like here and for example we want to upgrade the Toyota Supra so you want to go to media name and type in whatever it's going to be called in this case it's a Supra so it's it, it's titled Toy Supra and if you look over at the right hand side you can see what car it is that is the standard Supra this is the Horizon Edition Supra so I'm going to do the Horizon Edition so once you've found your car that you want to upgrade, make note of the engine ID. So in this case, the engine ID of the Toyota Supra is 2838. And you want to keep that in mind. Then you want to go all the way down to list upgrade these two right here. So for example, the Toyota Supra, hang on, they will be listed list upgrade engine turbo single and list upgraded engine turbo twin. Now the Toyota Supra can have a twin turbo fitted, not a single, so you're going to want to click on twin. Now it just corresponds to whatever car, so if your car that you're upgrading has a single turbo upgradable, go to single. If it has a twin, go to twin, very simple. In this example, the Supra has a twin. So you want to get the engine ID for whatever car you want to upgrade, go to the upgrade engine turbo twin and place it inside the search bar and you will have three things. And then you'll come up with three rows like this. This row right here will be the stock turbos data. The second one will be the next turbo up. And this will be the maxed out turbo. But that doesn't matter. What you want to do is once you find the correct lines, you want to go to all the way to the end. And all you've got to care about is these two right here. What you'd want to do is just very simply edit these values. For example, they are currently at 1 and then 0.75. If you want, let's say, five to 7,000 horsepower, I'd say upgrading them to 10 and 11. So just edit those values just like that to 10 and 11. If you want, let's say, 33,000 horsepower, um, I, I would recommend doing about that. Now, I'm not going to be entirely spot on with these horsepowers, but it's just kind of a perspective of what IDs you need to put in to get a certain amount of horsepower. I'd say if you do 100, it would probably give you over 100,000 horsepower. But either way, it's as simple as that. All you'd have to do then is click right changes over here, load up Forza, and then go to the upgrade menu and put the twin turbo on your car and your horsepower will be modified. Now, as I said, this only works on cars that can have a turbo or a twin turbo fitted to the stock engine. And now I'm going to show you how to put it on a car which doesn't have twin or single turbo as an option. So, for example, the Reliant Supervan. 
the Reliance Supervan stock cannot have a twin turbo or a single turbo placed onto the car, but can have a supercharger, but you can't do it with superchargers, so we need to fiddle around with the engine swaps. Now there's a different method for this, instead of going to data underscore engine, you want to go to data underscore car, and then search for the Reliant there, and we want to get the normal ID of the Reliant, which is 2563. Now keep the 2563 in mind, and we are going to go down to list, un, list engine upgrade. And then you can search in the ordinal bar, the ID of the Reliant, and you will get, you will get a, it could be two, it could be four options, it, it, it varies to how many engine swaps the car has. So as you can see here, here we have a list of all of the engine swaps that the Reliant can have. The bottom one being the stock engine, which cannot have uh, turbos fitted but this one up here which I believe is the i4 motorbike engine which you could engine swap to it can have a turbo fitted therefore we want to grab the engine ID for the superbike engine which is 2221 and then go down to what we were at before single turbo 2221 there we go the new motorbike engine can have a turbo fitted therefore we can search it up in the turbo single thing and edit the values here. As you can see, I've already edited mine. And the good thing about this is because the motorbike engine can be swapped to several other cars, because I've edited the motorbike engine here, whatever other car you do this on, whatever other car can have the motorbike engine swapped to, it will automatically have the horsepower boost that you give it here. It works exactly the same with the Dart. The Dodge Dart, we all know that can have a V12 in it. So for example, the engine ID for that is 2677. I mean, sorry, the car ID. You can see here, this is the V12 engine. The engine ID for the V12 is 858. So if you go to the twin turbo section with 258, sorry, 858, that's the V12's code, and what you can do is you can edit these here and every single car that can have the V12 engine fitted to it will have these modifications. So the Dodge Dart, the Lamborghini Centenario, the Veneno, every car that can have the V12 fitted to, you can edit here and it will modify it. So that is how to modify the horsepower and the second thing I'm going to show is how to increase the tyre width, you know, to give it the big beefy drag tyres like I have shown you. And this one is incredibly simple. You want to go up to data underscore car and then type in whatever car you want to modify. Let's say the Nissan GTR. So type in GTR. Let's say this one right here, the Nissan GTR 2012. You want to stay on this section and you're going to want to scroll across until you see this group of information here. You will see front tire width, front tire aspect, blah, blah, blah. But what you want to care about is the front wheel diameter and the rear wheel diameter. So these two columns here. And it's very simple. The Nissan GTR's tire is 20 inches in diameter. So if you want to increase it, I suggest only increasing it by like three inches. So let's say 23 and the rear wheel as well, 23. Now this may make it peek out the top of the, the fairing, so if it does, just decrease it by an inch, but it makes it look pretty cool when it's increased. So that is how to increase the tyre's size, and now along with that you may want to know how to decrease the rim size, um, because the rims might be quite big now we've increased the tyres, just to make it a lot more drag light and look a lot cooler. So for that you want to stay on this page, the data underscore car page, and type in the car you want to modify. For example, we just increased the tyres size of the Nissan GTR. So what we want to do for the Nissan GTR, we want to get the ID. In this case, it's 2002. So with the 2002, we want to go all the way down to list upgrade rim size front and wrist list upgrade rim size rear. For example, we'll do the front first. You want to go to ordinal and go 2002 since that was the ID for it. And there will be a numerous amount of options. There could be two rows, there could be five rows. It depends how many stock options there are to increase the rim size. Because every car you can increase and decrease the rim size as an upgrade already. But all that does is increase the rim size. We want to decrease it. So for example here, this is what the default rim size is on the Nissan GTR. So we can edit that to 18 inches. We could make it 17 inches, 16, 15, depends. 
and this is the only upgrade you can do to the rims um, on the game. So for example, so for example on the game if you go to upgrades for the Nissan GTR, the tires and then the front rim size, if you upgrade it, there will only be one option and that's this option which will make it 20. So if you want to decrease the rim size, I suggest making the stock one a little bit smaller. I suggest making the stock one a little bit smaller and then the upgradable one even smaller than that. So I've made 1918, you can make it 1917. So this way when you go to upgrade the Nissan, you can go to the tires and then you can go to the um, rim size and then you can see which one looks best, either 18 inches or 19 inches and so on. Now the next one is a very important one. This will be how to give it insane grip. As you can see in my Gurkha video, I started off with no grip at all. It was just wheel spinning at thousands of miles an hour. But then halfway through, I did the grip mod and then I was hitting 700 miles an hour. This is a must if you're giving a car more than 30,000 horsepower. So the thing you're going to want to go to is list underscore tire compound. You want to go to that. And there will be a bunch of different display names here. As you can see, all of my values are 15. And that's basically what you want to do. I have basically increased the grip on every single one of the tyres that there are in the game. For example, if you just want to increase the grip on the racing slick tyres, change every single value to 15 or 20. Only do the first like 20 rows. As you can see, I did the first 20 rows, then I leave it all default. But um, I just did every tyre in the game, absolutely every tyre is going to have the insane grip that my cars have in my uh, build videos. So it's very simple, just change every single value you see on this page to 15 or 20 or 25. 15 works perfectly for me. But don't do too many, just do the first like 15 to 20 rows because I've left mine default after that as you can see. Next thing will be is how to increase the backfire levels of a car. This will increase the amount of backfires your cars do on a regular basis. It's pretty cool to have, it's just how often it will spit flames and stuff like that. For that, you want to go down to this drop bar and go to backfire levels. And as you can see, there are the exhaust levels and the cam levels as well, because it, it the amount of backfires that you get rely on the exhaust and the cams and stuff like that. But just ignore all that. Basically, all you want to do is just edit this here. I'd suggest 10 because that will give you lovely amounts of backfires. Who doesn't love backfires, eh? So there you go. Just edit all those to 10 or to 5 just to increase it. It's pretty cool to have a lot of backfires. Now, the next one will be how to lower slash slam your car. This one's very simple as well. You're going to want to go to data underscore car and find out which car you want to do it with. Let's say, oh, I don't know. What car should we lower? Random car, the Mini Cooper. Why not? Who, who, who said we can't do it? So the Mini Cooper S Horizon Edition, for example, just grab the ID, which is 2699, and then go down to List Spring Damper Physics. And then to type in the engine ID, and then type in the ID of the car inside the ordinal. I don't remember if that was the correct one or not. 2699, yeah, it was. So for example, for the Mini Cooper, you have all sorts of options here. We have the ride height, the minimum ride height, the max ride height. So you can just basically edit all of these um, values to what you'd want your car to be lowered at and stuff like that. The max spring late. Anybody who wants to lower your car will, will be able to figure out which ones to edit and stuff like that. I've not personally done this yet, but this is where you'd want to come to edit your ride height and stuff like that. Now this next one is going to be how to give engine swaps to cars that can't have that specific engine swap. Now, now I think this works, I haven't tried it more than once yet, I've tried it once and it worked, so it might be a little glitchy, but this should work out just fine. You're going to want to go to data underscore car, let's say, what shall we do? Let's give the BMW iSetter a Bugatti engine. So you'd want to search for the car that you want to put a special engine in. In this case, I want to put a special engine in the iSetter. So you want to grab the car ID, which is 2411. Keep that noted down. Keep 2411 noted down. And then you would want to go over to, where is it? Here we go, list upgrade engine. And then place in the ID for the iSetter. 
And as you can see, all the possible engine swaps for the Isetta show up. We have the stock one and then the motorbike engine. However, we want to add another one. We want to add the, for example, the Bugatti engine. So, for example, we're going to go back up to the data underscore car and then we're going to find the engine or the car that has the engine that we want to put in the Isetta. For example, we want the Bugatti engine, the Bugatti Veyron, Super Sport. The ID for that is 1328, so go down to the same thing, 1328. And of course, the Bugatti can't have any engine swaps, so here it is on its own, the Bugatti's engine. And what we want to take note of is the engine ID. Just quickly copy the engine ID, which is 788. And then remove the Bugatti from the search, type back in the Isetta, so we have a list of the Isetta's engine swaps. Now, as we want to add the Bugatti engine as an engine swap to the Isetta, we're going to want to click New Record up here. Then it will create a new record, as you can see, and we need to edit all of these corresponding to the Bugatti engine. So for Ordinal, we want to make that the same as the Isetta, obviously. For level, you can add whatever you like. I'm just going to put three because it's a few after these levels here. For the engine ID, this has to be the engine ID of the Bugatti. In this case, it was 788. Is stock, we're going to want to type zero because it is not the stock engine. For manufacturer ID, we need to find the engine again. Here we go, the manufacturer ID of the Bugatti engine is 58 because we just searched it up. So we need to type 58 in there. The price, you can have whatever you like. I'm going to do 20,000. And then everything else, you can just copy what is below or just make up your own values. And so basically what we've done there is we have grabbed the engine ID of an engine we want to put onto a car. We have gone to the engine list for that car. We've put the same old in in an upgraded level. We put the engine we want to upgrade to. We've made sure it doesn't stay stock and every other option like that. Make sure you click right to changes and then when you go and then when you go to upgrade it in the um, upgrade shop, there should be an option there. If there isn't, you can do it this different method. As you can see here, this is the stock engine for the Isetta. So for example, this is the stock engine. We want to change this to the Bugatti engine and change the manufacturer ID. And there you go, simple as that. You wouldn't need this one here. All you've done is made the stock engine in the Isetta the Bugatti engine. And then, for example, if you want to upgrade the Bugatti engine, you would go down to List, Upgrade Engine Twin Turbo, type in the Bugatti's engine ID, edit these values here, and there you go. Every single car that can have the Bugatti engine inside of it with this engine ID will have this upgraded horsepower that I've given it. For example, another thing you want to do is if you want a bunch of credits we can go to data slash underscore car sorry and then for example a car that has a credit or xp boost i know the jaguar f type project 7 horizon edition this can have um i think an xp boost so grab the id for that which is 2688 go down to horizon edition cars type in 2688 and there we have we have the Jaguar Horizon Edition and the buff multiplier so we can make this 300 times and then in the Jaguar um, XP Horizon Edition if you go and do a race you will get a 300 times XP boost. Now as you know to do the horsepower um, modifications that most people will want to see this video for is that you need to get the engine ID of the car you want to upgrade now in the description once it's finished it may not be there yet but in the description once it's finished there's going to be a massive list of the engine ids corresponding to the car so if you don't want to if you can't be bothered to go to data underscore engine you can go to the list in the description when it's there and then all you have to do is skip straight to here or here it depends which turbo it has type in the engine id that you find in the description for the car you want to upgrade and then you can upgrade it. It just skips you having to find it yourself. We have them all written down. So yeah, if you have any questions regarding this, please let me know in the comments below. 
It's very simple to do this once you've got it in your head. I'm sure most of you will watch this video once and then be able to figure out everything else on your own. It's just finding out which file to do. It took me absolutely ages to find which file I had to open up with this program. It took me ages to find which which of these things I had to upgrade. It turns out it's the last two and stuff like that. But anyway, any questions, let me know in the comments below. Please stay tuned for more Forza Dev Build content. I hope you all have a nice day, everyone. I'll see you all later.